<laughs> Michael Urey may have gotten his start on TV's Ugly Betty, but he's proven to be one of the most versatile theater stars of his generation, turning in fantastic performances in off-Broadway shows like Buyer and Seller, The Temperamentals, Angels in America, Shows for Days, and The Government Inspector. Now, he's brought his latest off-Broadway success to Broadway, taking over the role of Arnold Beckoff from original star and writer Harvey Firestein in the iconic Tony-winning play, Torch Song. Here, Yuri talk about life in Harvey Land and his dreams of being a wise old man of the stage on this week's Show People. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. So good to see you. You too. Wonderful you, to be you're here. You're having like a big Broadway moment. <laughs> Torch Song, the fantastic revival of the Harvey Firestein's classic, yep. gay classic, iconic. Seminal. I mean, it is, right? I mean, it, it I really so. is. It's one of those plays. I think so, yeah. And it's it's a reboot. It's a, oh, what, are we, what is it? How, how do you describe what this is? It's an, an edited version of Torch Song Trilogy. Right. It's three plays, yeah. The International Stud, Fugue in a Nursery, and Widows and Children First. And they, he wrote them separately. Yeah. Um, over the course of like two and a half years right. for La Mama. Yeah, they were each done one at a time. Right, yep. at La Mama in the late 70s. And then they put them all together and did them off-Broadway at yeah. a little place uptown that's not a theater anymore. And then it moved to Broadway. And it was like four and a half hours long. Right. And by the time it got to Broadway, he, was al he had already begun the process of cutting it yeah. so that they could do it. <laughs> But you have to, union, there's union rules. Exactly. You have to finish by a certain time or else it's going to be more expensive for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and also there was a matinee uh, Arnold and Ed. So the, the Arnold and Ed are the two main characters that are throughout the entire play. Yeah. And they couldn't do two shows in a day. Right. The other characters can because they just... You got to get dinner. So, <laughs> so, they were, so, they, so they wanted him to cut the show so he could do eight shows a week. Right. Because Harvey was also playing yes. Arnold. It's so funny because he always said that the three plays were like cans of Campbell's soup. They were condensed, and you just add water, and it's a whole play. And now, they're even more condensed. Well, I read the, uh, so the, the script just came out. That the has paperback. the full version and our version. Right, and I, I read it, and he says uh, in the foreword that he considered actually, when he wanted to bring it back, he thought maybe I'll do the three full plays in repertory. As, as like an option, but oh. then this was the other option. To, no, just cut the whole thing down. So it's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Harvey must be sort of like haunted by all the stuff that's missing. You know what I mean? I mean, What's when you go funny, through the process. It, 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 he is the first one to admit that he's not the same guy who wrote the plays. Right. I mean, it was a long time ago. Right. He was 28 when it was on Broadway, uh -huh. when it went to Broadway. I mean, that's crazy. And so he's the first to admit that he can't rewrite it because he's not the same guy. But I think the time, having been in it and spent so much time with it, having already gone through the process of editing back then, mm -hmm. he did a really wonderful job of editing. And very rarely, I think, does he, does he miss material. What's interesting, when we were rehearsing it off-Broadway yeah. last year, we would occasionally hit these uh, walls where uh, there would be, I'm pretty good at learning lines, but there would be occasionally lines that I just couldn't remember mm. over and over and over again. I couldn't remember the same lines. And at the same time, Moises Kaufman, our director, yeah. would be yearning for, for, for more out of certain moments or subtext. Mm. Or, and, and he would say, why isn't this here? And I'd say, it's just not there. It's not there. I don't know what you want, but it's not there. Right. I, this is what I have. Yeah. And we realize that it was cut material. Right. I couldn't figure out my cue because there was a, a page and a half missing. Hmm. And he couldn't figure out what the subtext was because wow. there was a page and a half missing. So then we go back to the old script, find out what was gone, and suddenly... It's it like all having made a backstory for yeah, your version. It all it, made yeah. sense. And we were able to make the leaps and, and fill the, fill the uh, emotions. And wow. It was, so it was, it was really cool. It was sort of like having the benefit of a four-hour version of this thing and doing it in three hours, we could still, in our way, you know, have the, the, the four-hour experience. Yep. Arnold Beckoff, the character you play, yeah. uh, is a drag queen looking for love. I mean, you're literally getting into drag in the, the first scene yeah. of the show. Harvey Firestein was sort of basically living that life, right? I mean, is kind and of, looking yeah. for love and doing drag and sort of becoming a known uh, downtown performer. And this role is so associated with him. And yeah. I feel like it's one of the reasons why this play hasn't really been touched for so many years. It's almost like one of those roles that's like, well, 
wow, this right. is this is gonna be it's really Harvey Firestein. He did the movie. It, it totally launched him. And yeah. and because he he wrote it and while it was still running on Broadway, Lacage happened. He became multiple Mar Tony winner. Yeah. Many Within Tonys. like two years. Yeah. He won I think he had three Tonys in two years. Yeah. It, it was a, a very exciting time and he sort of became what he is and what we know uh, now. So I think part of the reason it took so long um, to revive it on Broadway or revive it at all in, in New York was because they wanted to get away from the Harvey uh, shoes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, or the bunny slippers, way. the Harvey bunny slippers. The Harvey, yeah, yes. exactly, the bunny yes. slippers. Um, but also I know he wanted to get past the uh, AIDS epidemic right. being such a killer right. and being such a, um, a, a definition of what it was to be gay. You mm -hmm. know, there was a long period of time where if you wrote a play about gay people, it had to be about AIDS, right. or it had to include right. AIDS. And, and Torch Song's pre-AIDS. The, the third play is in 1980. So it, it all happens before AIDS. And when the movie came out, it was sort of the beginning mm -hmm. of the AIDS epidemic, and Harvey faced a lot of flack for not making, not putting it in the movie. Mm -hmm. But it's really not about that. Um, and, and so I think he wanted to get past uh, it being the, the sort of central you know, um, problem of the community. And, and, uh, and, and be a real period piece. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, our set, David Zinn, our wonderful set designer, yeah. put the dates, it's right. there, it's clear, this is when right. we are. And, and I feel like, and, and when I talk to people about the play, it feels like it was written like yesterday mm -hmm. or like tomorrow mm -hmm. because it, it's so vibrant. And because he was such a prophet. When he wrote it, he saw these things happening yeah you know, marriage equality yeah. and, and gay adoption yeah. and and all of these these ideas that were crazy to people then, were, mm -hmm. were science fiction to people then. But you know, back then people were shocked that a guy would come out and be and want to be a husband right. and a father and then actually do it. Mm -hmm. And now our audiences are shocked that a grown gay man in New York has a mother who doesn't accept who right. he is. And that's the shocking thing it's jarring, yeah. to the audience. So when they announced that this was happening, I was excited. And when they announced that you we're playing Arnold, I thought, yes, that's perfect. Oh, thank because you. Because it had to be the right performer who we know is not trying to be Harvey Firestein. Right, right. And obviously has the talent to do it, but were you fearful at all about taking on this role? Or were you just like, sure, let's do it, let's jump in? Well, I think what you just said, that, that, that it, ha it couldn't be Harvey, it couldn't be someone doing Harvey, I feel like is a universal thought. Anybody who understands what it means to play a role like this and understand that you can't just do Harvey. You know, like you yeah. couldn't just hire someone to do Carol Channing and Hello Dolly right. or, or do Barbara Streisand and Funny Girl. Right. You know, like I think people understand like great iconic roles. You can't just recreate what was special about that. And so I just realized you're the Bette Midler of Torch Song Trilogy. <laughs> you're, you're, you're reclaiming it. I love it. I'm the I'm Bette sorry. Midler. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, so I think that that, that's sort of a, a universal idea. So when right. it was first brought to me, the idea was first brought to me, it was never really even a question that we would try that. Because I never saw myself as Arnold. I've known this play since I was in high school. Yeah. And I never saw myself as Arnold. Right. And it wasn't until Moises Kaufman and Richie Jackson, our, our producer, yeah. who separately approached me. Oh, wow. wow. Coincidentally, okay. separately approached me about doing this, that I thought, Am I Arnold? Could I play Arnold? Because I had always thought Harvey, Harvey, Harvey. Yeah. It's got to be Harvey. Yeah. And if it's not Harvey, then it's going to be someone like Harvey. Right. Um, and then I just didn't really think about it for years and years and years until it came up. And I thought, my gosh, I guess it could be me. I guess I could do it. And when I looked at it and read it, I could I could say it. I you know it, right. I could, you look I, at it from a whole different right and I could, viewpoint. I, I, right. could, I could say the words and I could and I, it fit in my mouth and and then my audition was to read the whole play for Harvey with the cast of actors, which is a gift because, you know, if I had to go in with sides and audition, you know, that's that's a nightmare anyway. Right. And I'm not good at, I'm not very good at that. Really? And um, I probably would have, you know, f f f screwed it up. And so getting to read the whole play, I did screw it up over and over again, but I also got things right and was able to, to, to go to play the whole arc of the mm -hmm. character for him. And so we got to the end and I, and I thought, oh, I, I got it. I, I mean, I didn't know, know that I got the job, but yeah. I knew that I, 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 could, I could do it. I could play this. I could play this role. And, they and Harvey so gave too. you a big bear hug. Harvey gave me a big hug and he said, you just want to wear a dress. 
I was hoping you were going to give us a little Harvey. So uh, <laughs> I, I, now that I got that, we're going to take a quick break. Be right back with more Michael Yuri. Back with Michael Yuri now killing it in Torch Song. Oh, they don't use big like phrases like that for plays. Killing, you know what I mean? murdering, like, yeah, murdering Torch Song every night at the Hayes, <laughs> which is where the, where Harvey did it. Yeah, are you like in the same dressing room? I know that's well, been no, they redone re- yeah. since then. So Second Stage bought the, the Helen Hayes yeah. and they renovated it, and so now the dressing rooms are upstairs. Oh. it was a theater, of course. It was like a you know playhouse for years yeah. and years and years, and then and then in the seventies. It, be, it became a TV studio, and then it became a, a playhouse again, and it was called the Little Theater. Yep. And that's when Torch Song opened. Right. And then when they built the Marquis Hotel, the Marriott Marquis yep. Hotel, they tore down, I think, three theaters. Know, let's not talk about it. It was a, it was a Very dark sad. period, including the old Helen right. Hayes. Don't call her the old Helen Hayes. She just like to be just called Helen Hayes. <laughs> you mean the, the old Helen Hayes Theater? Yes. So. Yes, the yes. former <laughs> Helen Hayes Theater. But she became was the nothing. old Helen Hayes. For she was she, always old. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, elderly. <laughs> uh, mature. Um, the, uh, it, so it, it, when it got torn down, John Glines, right. the producer of Torch Song, who recently passed, decided to rename. Oh, I didn't realize it was him. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think it, oh, I think that's, that's, that's right. Cool. I think it was yeah. him. Decided to, you know, they. I, I I don't know how that. I guess they just decided to pay to change the marquee. Yeah, Came it was during the run of Torch Song. It trilogy. was during the run. So Torch Song opened at the Little Theater and then was right. at well, the it ran like Hayes. twelve years or something. It ran, it a, ran long a long time. time yeah. yeah, and Harvey tells the story that one night he was. Uh, one day he was standing outside the theater after it had been running for a long time and these two matinee ladies walked by and looked at the marquee and said, oh, if I'd known Helen Hayes was in the show, I'd have gone years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey has good stories. Oh my gosh. Uh, what's great. it been like living in Harvey Land? He has great stories. Better than stories. Disneyland, Harvey Land. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, and it's, it's all encompassing, isn't it? I mean, Harvey's a big part of your life now, I'm sure. I'm he's, sure. Yes, he's a huge part of my life, you know, and, and we text and... and <laughs> he wants to. He wants to know about the, how the show. I mean, he. What's great about Harvey is not only did he write the play, but he and play the play. But yeah. he's an actor, and he gets yeah. a long run. He he knows what it's like. You know, he did right. he played Tevya for two years or right. something, and yeah. you know he understands what it's like to play a, a show over and over and over and over and over again. So I mean, one time, one time, uh, there's an onion in, in the in the play. A uh-huh. prop, it's a real onion, but it, we use it, an onion. And when we played off Broadway, it. <laughs> it rolled off the stage. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it's like in the third play, you know, it, there's certain sections of the play where you could probably figure something out and go get it. But like in the third play, it's a traditional kitchen sink, fourth right. wall. Right, yeah. So like, I can't go get it. Right. You know, it's, it's gone. <laughs> I gotta right, right. let that onion go. Right. And I told him about it, and he said, that kind of thing always happens in prop shows. I was like, prop shows. Prop shows. I learned a new phrase. I love the theater. <laughs> <laughs> We're, I'm in a prop show. You're in a prop I show. Love, I love doing prop shows. <laughs> and then and then the other night, a jar of jelly almost rolled off. And I was like, oh, prop shows. Oh, prop sh- <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it didn't. That could have been quite messy. But then, uh, you know, uh, the Helen Hayes, it's sort of different now. But, but when he played there, it's one of those theaters, and I don't know if, this drives you crazy, but in some theaters, the front row and the stage are situated as such that you can put, it's convenient for you to put your- Oh, the, the audience members put their things on the edge of the stage. Playbill or a- or a, and coat. It, a winter coat. And, and it's just <laughs> like, what, what are they thinking? What are so they it's thinking? convenient from the front row to just put your stuff, your yes. phone, just- just put your stuff. <laughs> don't put your stuff up there. Just so don't, please. So don't. this is actually yeah. happening. So th- not not with us because <laughs> it's different now, and we sort of our our set is sort of sort of above, so it's okay. not really there. But good lord, it used to happen apparently when they played in the eighties, and, oh. and 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 he and it would you know make him crazy. And he said one night um, in the third play, people kept putting there, the, a playbill. There was a playbill, and, and he went over and he kicked it off, and then it. It, it showed up again, and he, said, oh, and he went over and he kicked it off again. And the third time, they put this thing on the. Uh, he went over and he realized that it was not a playbill; it was a prop, and it is the prop that changes the course of the play. It's this book by Oscar Wilde that's very important <laughs> to the story of the play, and they were helping. Somehow, it had fallen off the stage, and he was like, "Ooh, prop shows, <laughs> prop shows," you know. It always happens in prop shows. 
it makes me uh, fantasize that Patti Lapone is in the show with you. With the, so the, that is an issue like that. Because when you did uh, Shows for Days, I love that title, when you did that <laughs> off-Broadway, it, like it was Patty. when she, Patty had one of her one of her moments with the phone. And it was legendary. Legendary, and you we, got to experience it. I was on stage when it you, happened. Yeah, that's we, amazing. You, that's like one of those things that... We were playing at the Mitzi Newhouse yep. at Lincoln Center, which is like uh, three-quarter yep. thrust. Mm -hmm. And so some of the entrances are through the audience. And there was this woman, and I couldn't see her in the first act because I, I couldn't see the people in that play. You know, for some reason, I couldn't yeah. actually see the people. But everybody else saw her. She was texting. And she was right by one of those entrances. And everyone was so mad in intermission. They were like, this woman is texting the whole show. Just go, <laughs> just leave, just go if you don't like it. And then... And is Patty just like bubbling up? She was... The she intermission? Was, you saw it coming? Well, what's funny is... You're like, we're going to get a Mama Rose moment. I, it's going to yeah, happen. <laughs> I heard about it from other people. And then I went and checked. And I was like, I was like, hey, P, hey, P I heard there's someone texting. And she's like, that woman! <laughs> and then the second act started... And it, the second act opened with, I was like off to the side and I could see the audience and she and Dale Souls were talking to the audience. Right, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I saw her, I was like, that woman came, not, she came back and she's still texting. And at the end of that scene, Patty had this grand exit where she would go out, very funny and get a lot right. of you know, applause and laughter. She would sort of <laughs> walk out grandly through one of these vomitoriums by, by the audience and that night, she let the exit go. She said, screw the exit. And she went right up to that woman and grabbed the phone and ran off stage. And got bigger applause, maybe. Oh, huge applause. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not everyone could see it because of the, because of the, not everyone knew, right. but the people on the other side who saw it, they, they clapped because they could see the woman. Right. That's yeah. the thing about that theater is like, you can't, you can see each other well, too. certain theaters, you just get, sometimes you get lost staring at yes, all these members like, across. What, is, what are they? <laughs> doing over like there. Once on this island, Timon and then the, all the people over there. Exactly. The exactly. <laughs> what are they what what are, you, what are they looking at? <laughs> it's so funny. And and so then she got off stage and apparently I was still on stage when it happened but she got on stage and she goes, "I got the phone." <laughs> what do I do now? And they ended up giving it back to her. Right. But I think we should have taken pictures of our asses. I I, I still regret that we didn't keep it and <laughs> Take pictures of our asses with it. That's, um, I like that idea. I think pictures we should have. And when I told her that, she was like, oh, <laughs> we should have. But we gave it back Everybody to her. Everybody needs a photo of Patty Lapone's ass. <laughs> Let's face it. Everybody has a photo of Patty Lapone's ass. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that was the punishment to this woman, not giving her the photo. You got your start for, for uh, most of us from Ugly Betty. Right. And then you started doing theater, and it was like, oh, that guy, that guy's doing theater. And I knew you went to Juilliard, number 32, right? That's your group. 32, that's, your group. that's right. That yeah. number is like, that is the thing, right? To be, like, Patty was number one. Group, Patty's Patty group was one. Patty was group one, and group, group 32. We are group 32, and now they're on, like, group 50 or something. Right, something like that. But, like, you've done so much interesting performances off-Broadway, and so many, and a lot of great dramas and comedies and farce and musicals, and you have right. done musicals, and right. it's so, Interesting. So what, oh, where does Torch thanks. Song fit into all that for you? Does it feel like a big moment for you? Yeah, it kind of feels like the reward right? in a way. I mean, that's not quite right because they were all rewards. Right. But like, you know, Torch Song is, is in so many ways, it's the, it's the culmination of all these other great plays that I've gotten to do. I mean, yeah. I got to be in Angels in America, Prior Walter, who, who you know, goes through so much and, 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 and plays many of the same colors as... Arnold and I did Jordan Seavey's great new play Homos or Everyone in America yes, at the Labyrinth, that was fantastic. which was an exciting play about uh, hate crimes, which is which happens in yeah. uh, Torch Song. I was in Buyer and Seller, and I always think you know they wouldn't, they would never have let me play Harvey Firestein if I hadn't played Barbara Streisand. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you know doing um, the Government Inspector and, yeah. and 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 musicals. I mean, there is like a certain kind of quality. Uh, being in a musical that that helps yeah. to be in Torch Song and and I think you know Richie and Moises and Harvey when they gave me this opportunity I think it was in part seeing that I was really committed and yeah. and um, and really loved it because you can't play a role like this that's so taxing and so full and carry so much on their shoulders without really really giving over yourself and and. I, I know I, I'm willing to, and I, and I think... And Torch Song is, of course, a Broadway play. Yeah. But it 
started off Broadway. Really, right. it started off off Broadway, right. and I think there's a se sensibility about that that I get, and that they get. You know, that's where that's where we all started, yeah. and and I think that they wanted that that energy. But now you're a big Broadway star. <laughs> yeah, Michael Yuri, Torch Song. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take another break. We'll be right back with more Michael Yuri. And we are back with Michael Yuri. This is now Act Three, which is called what in Torch? Widows and Children First. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's why Mercedes Rule shows up, and the whole energy of the. Yeah. Of the theater district changes the minute <laughs> she comes on stage. <laughs> Doesn't it feel that way? Yeah. I mean, Mercedes' I, I, role is. Oh, she is a force. Yeah, she's, she's a, force. a real force. When what is it like getting to know her? I've, I've kind of been obsessed. And she sat here last year, and I was obsessed that I got to sit with her because I loved her. Like, Fisher King is like one of my favorite oh. things. Anyway, I, I love her so much. What is it like getting to know her? She loves talking about acting. She loves actors. She loves the work. Yeah. She's probably the most spontaneous actor I've ever worked with. Okay. It's the same performance, but it's deeply nuanced uh -huh. and alive and, I mean, it's a dream casting. She's just flawless. We adore her. Uh, she cast, adores you. She really well, talks you up. I mean. Well, I'm obsessed with her and our, the whole cast. We, we all completely love her. She made us margaritas last night. Uh, in the green room, <laughs> and they were very strong. That's and what's happening backstage. Yeah, <laughs> well, her son's in town. Her son's okay, in college, uh -huh. and, and he came to town, and so it was sort of like, Jake's back, so. Um, <laughs> my my, my, my half-brother, my step-brother, I don't know. Whatever <laughs> it was. And um, I, too, have been a fan of hers. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was Big. You know, she's uh, the mom yes. in Big, and yes. when Big came out, I was a kid, and yeah. I was like, this is the coolest movie ever, yeah, yeah. and she's a cool mom, yeah. and... And now she's your mom. And now she's my mom. And then when I was um, just getting out of school, or I think it was I was at school at Juilliard. She was in The Goat on Broadway. Oh, or who was Sylvia? Or who was Sylvia <laughs> with Bill Pullman? <laughs> and she was amazing. Yeah. And that play was mind blowing yes. for me. I saw it twice. And um, so I, I, it, it actually came up. We were in rehearsal yesterday, and she mentioned something about The Goat, and. And then I finished the story. She was like, and I did this in The Goat. And I was like, yeah, and then you did this and this and this. And then he came in and did this. And wow. she was like, I Super don't even fan. remember that. <laughs> yeah, I, it, was, it was sort of, th th that happens from time to time where like a super fan moment comes out. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> how did you know that? You know, because I think she just, just, you know, we work together. She doesn't realize that I'm also a fan of hers. Yeah. It's, it's such a treat to work with her and, and the whole cast. It's. It's really like family. You know, we all did it off Broadway and now we're all doing it on Broadway. Yeah. And we, we knew when we finished, basically, basically when we finished or shortly after that, we were going to get to go to Broadway. Yeah. So we've been in touch. And so often you do a play and then the play ends and you, you sort of lose touch right. with people. Even right. if you love them, right. and, uh, you know, and, and you were best friends while you were running the show, sometimes you lose touch. And because we knew, we stayed in touch. That's great. And yeah. we saw each other. And... and we, you know, went, you know, they came, Mercedes and Roxana came down and saw Hamlet. and Mike, Which you were in, by the way. Which I was in, Jack yeah, in, in Washington, Hamlet. yeah, right. And Michael Rosen and Jack and I went and spent a weekend at Ward's house. And we became family. We became family doing a play, and then we stayed in touch. And so when we started rehearsal again, it was so different because we really knew each other intimately. Wow. When we, when we rehearsed it last year, we were pretending to yeah, know each yeah, other. We were yeah. pretending to be family, yeah. and now we really are, and, and it makes a huge difference. This one, like, a lot of you are in bed together. On stage, <laughs> on stage. I'm assuming <laughs> just on stage. <laughs> we cuddle off stage. <laughs> cuddle. And my dog comes to the theater, and I, if I can't find, she's not in my dressing room, she's usually cuddling with one of the other actors somewhere. In addition to being a very talented actor, you're also a director, and I, I know, uh, Bright Colors and Bold Patterns you directed. I directed Broadway. that, yeah. Didn't you actually first direct The Fantastics? Am I correct about that? Yes. You have a, you, you, this is not your first stab at directing. I directed in about high, the Fantastics. Yes, in high school. High school. I directed The Fantastics. I, I could picture that. I could picture you being like, you know, guys, I'm going to direct. Like, I could picture you being <laughs> like, about how I'm going to pull this together and I'm going to be the director. Yeah, well, I wanted to be, a, before I decided I wanted to be an actor, I thought I was going to be a director. and. Huh. I, and, and really, I thought I was going to be a drama teacher. Okay. And that's because I idolized my drama teachers, and I thought that's the professional 
track in the theater. That's right. how I can be in the theater right. is by teaching drama. Right. Um, I didn't think I had, you know, what it takes to be in the theater for real. And so I said, I'll be a, I'll be a drama teacher and, and I should start now. So I'm gonna direct plays. Okay. And we- This is in Texas. This is in Texas, in yep. Plano, Texas. And, yep. and my teachers were very supportive and they let me direct. I directed a bunch of plays in high school and, and the Fantastics was the biggest hit. Okay, um, that, was, that was the big. That was the big hit, and okay. it was really good. We, it was really cool. We yeah. built because um, we had a, you know, it was one of those big auditoriums in uh -huh. high school, big six, seven hundred seat theater, which is not right for the Fantastics because it's intimate. So we put risers on the stage, and we did it, you know, intimately. Everybody was on stage, and uh, it was awesome, and people loved it. And then we did it again. We remounted it. Oh, remounted. And, yeah, it was very, <laughs> very cool. One of your first triumphs. It was, yeah. It was, it was, it was. I was extremely proud and thrilled to do it, and, and what a wonderful show! I mean, that's such a wonderful yeah. musical. And then I got to see it before, you know. I mean, it, it ran here for so long, and my first trip to New York, I got to see it off Broadway at the Sullivan Street Playhouse. After you directed it. After I directed yeah, it. Yeah, it's good. So you, you you directed it with a fresh mind, and yeah. then you got to see what the other production was. Exactly, like. and I had some notes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you are locked in for a, a life in the theater. Is that, is that fair oh, to yeah, say? For I mean, sure. and I'm sure film and TV as well, but, but you seem very committed to this. W where do you see yourself in 30, 40 years? Do you see yourself directing? Do you see yourself uh, Alfred Lunt? Or, I mean, like, what? I what's hope to be on stage as long as I can. I did Hamlet yeah. a, a, in Washington with uh, the Shakespeare Theater, yeah. and this wonderful actor named Keith Baxter played the ghost of Hamlet's father. Mm -hmm and the player king and the grave digger. And he's 84, 85. Mm. And people of that age on stage is so thrilling because they have, uh, of all the experience they've got. I mean, Keith Baxter worked with Orson Welles and John Gilgood wow, wow. and me. Like that, right. that's like, right. I got to be in scenes with this man, share the stage and speak Shakespeare yeah. with the man who worked with these giants and is himself a giant and still doing it. And I want to be that. I want to be that. I want to be I want to be the guy who's 85 years old and who a young actor says, you know, he worked with Mercedes Rule. You know, <laughs> I, I want I he worked it. with Patty Lapone. That guy worked with Patty right. Lapone. Can you believe that? Right. And and now he's here. He's still doing it. Right. Um, so I'm gonna do crossword puzzles and keep my brain sharp and, <laughs> and, and eat vegetables and stay strong and, and, and I hope that, of course I wanna be on TV again. Of course. I want that money. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and, and movies, I mean, of course I want all that stuff, but I never wanna not be on, on stage. It's just, it's too exciting and, and the audience knows how special it is. I think that's what it is more than anything. It's mm -hmm. like, the audience just knows how special it is that we're doing it for them mm -hmm. and just for them. That's thrilling and that's why you can do a play for such a long time right. and, and not get tired or bored because it is new every night. It really is actually a fresh perspective every night and I think the audiences, whether they realize that or not, they know when they come to a Broadway show or an off-Broadway show or any, any play, they know that it's special for them and, and everybody showed up for tonight. Right, so we're gonna be seeing you, a lot of you, a lot of you. I'm gonna be an old man looking at you as an old man. I'll be in the audience, you'll be on stage. I knew him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Everyone, please go see Torch Song if you haven't. It's a fantastic reimagining of, uh, of a play that I've loved my, my whole life. And it's at the Hayes Theater and Michael Yuri is. Thank you, thanks It's up there, starring on Broadway. Yeah. I love it, congratulations. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time.